Facebook friends. I am Sarah Mayberry, medical producer here at Local 4, coming to you from the Click on Detroit set. I'm joined by Dr. Brad Uren from the University of Michigan, and we are holding a special Q&A for you focused on what does a heart attack feel like? Uh, hopefully some of you had a chance to see our story last night at 11. If not, stick around because we are going to play it again. Um, and I want to give you a little bit of a background on this. We actually worked with Dr. Uren on a story previously um, promoting CPR in schools and we went to him after that and said hey heart month is coming up you know we we want to do something special we want to do something that could really help save some lives do you have any ideas for us and uh, he came up with the idea for last night's story um, and we're following up with some questions today and I know doctor being a doctor you do have a disclaimer you need to make so take it away that's right and one thing I'd like to mention is you said this is heart month and so the goal here is really to educate people if we can if we can make people more aware of their symptoms and get people to care sooner maybe we can save some lives but the other thing I want to make clear is that this is really not intended to replace medical advice replace your doctor so if anyone out there is actually having chest pain symptoms right now please um, if you're concerned about it call 911 talk to your doc do not uh, ask us here on Facebook we're not trying to uh, replace your doctor provide medical advice I also have a disclaimer I want to make. Uh, I am a producer, not a reporter. So be kind to me in the comments. I don't, don't want to see, oh, check out this horrible new reporter, Channel 4 hired producer. I'm usually behind the scenes, so be kind. Um, I think we might as well get started and um, roll the tape of the last night's story. It's often not what you imagine. There seems to be this sort of persistent myth out there that if it's not sharp, it can't be your heart. And that's wrong. Yeah, Hollywood has given us a clear picture of what a heart attack looks like. Someone clutching their chest and, and crashing to the ground. Yeah, but in real life, the signs can be far more subtle and confusing. Dr. Frank McGeorge joins us with an eye-opening look at the symptoms everybody needs to know. What does a heart attack feel like? Three survivors with three very different sets of symptoms. Would you recognize the signs in time to save your life? Excruciating pain in my upper back. Um, I had pain down my arms, into my hands. Uh, I felt lightheaded, a little nauseous. Um, and something was definitely not right. As I told uh, my wife I had heartburn. Mowing the lawn, I would get winded. And then the weirdest thing is my teeth would hurt. It's kind of like, okay, my teeth hurt. That might I tell somebody my teeth hurt. Three survivors, three very different sets of symptoms. Keith Trost of Ann Arbor noticed his warning signs months before he went into cardiac arrest, leaving a Michigan football game. I never had the elephant on the chest feeling. I never had the heart palpitations. I never had any of the other things. Greg Merritt of Brighton felt his unexplained heartburn the day before his heart stopped. It was likely signaling me to say, Now's the time to go. Courtney Alexander of Celine had just finished a day of skiing when her symptoms struck out of the blue. Had no risk factors, no family history of, of anything, um, especially heart disease. Sometimes it's difficult for even physicians to figure out what's going on in those first few minutes. Dr. Brad Uren at the University of Michigan says it's common for patients to miss or dismiss the red flags. There seems to be this sort of persistent myth out there that if it's not sharp, it can't be your heart, and that's wrong. I've had an EKG in my hand that clearly showed that person was having a heart attack. And as I try to explain that to the patient, they say, no, no, I'm, I'm not having any chest pain. There's just this pressure here. And in fact, if you look at how most people experience heart pain, it's actually a, a heavy pressure in the chest um, with, a, with a squeezing sensation maybe radiating to the shoulder, the jaw, the back, associated with some shortness of breath, nausea, being sweaty. Those are the classic symptoms. Women and people with diabetes are more likely to experience different or more subtle symptoms. And while some heart problems are sudden, often there were warning signs. If you look at people who've had heart attacks, often you can go back and ask them, and in the days, weeks, and months preceding that, they'll talk about, well, normally when I walk up the flight of stairs at work, I can do that with no problem, and now I'm getting this tightness or this discomfort. Waiting until symptoms are severe can result in a deadly delay. If you're actually having heart muscle damage, the, the longer that you wait and let that heart muscle die, uh, the worse off you will be. As an emergency physician, I'd rather see somebody at the beginning of the problem rather than at the end. Don't sit at home trying to self-diagnose. Don't wait. Keith, Greg, and Courtney are grateful they survived. They hope others 
learn from their stories. Make sure you see your doctor because they're the ones that are going to be able to tell it. The best thing to do is to go get this checked out. Uh, don't do what I did and say, well, I'm sure it's going to be fine. Someone in the U.S. suffers a heart attack every 43 seconds. Would you know what to do if it was you? Tomorrow at 5, I'll show you the four steps that could help save your life. And that's definitely something everybody needs to see yeah. tomorrow at 5. Yeah, one of the experts, as you know, we heard them, one of them say, as a general rule, if you're sitting at home Googling what are the symptoms of a heart attack, yeah. well, there's a fair chance you're having a heart attack and should be calling 911 yeah. instead. It's, it's better to be safe than sorry for sure. We want to turn this into a learning experience for everybody. If you or a loved one are a heart attack survivor, go to our Facebook page or the Good Health page and share your story because we want to know what does a heart attack feel like so you can help others to recognize that, you know, what's happening faster so people don't know. May not be what we expect. And tomorrow at 1215, Dr. Brad Uren, who we just heard in that story from U of M, will be joining us for a special Facebook Live. He'll be answering questions and sharing some of the lessons learned from your stories. It's not always the elephant on the chest like what you that's, were saying. That's what I'd always yeah. heard it was, yeah. Hello, welcome back to our special Q&A, What Does a Heart Attack Feel Like? I'm Sarah Mayberry, medical producer here at Channel 4, joined by Dr. Brad Uren from the University of Michigan, who you just saw in that story. Uh, doctor, you actually inspired that story. We went to you and asked you, you know, what can we do for Heart Month that would really help people? What could save some lives that you would tell them if you had a big audience to tell people? Why was it that this is what you wanted to tell them? Well, one of the things that I've seen uh, in, in taking care of countless people with chest pain over the years is that Oftentimes people who come in having a heart attack or having very concerning symptoms will sometimes mention they've been having those symptoms for a few weeks or a few months. They didn't think it was their heart for one reason or another. And it's hard to know how many people actually don't make it to the hospital uh, that have been having those symptoms. And so the goal here during Heart Month is to educate as many people as possible about the symptoms to watch out for and try to get them uh, to care with their regular doctor first or if with us if, if it's an emergency. I think the question a lot of people struggle with is, you know, the debate and delay. They sit at home, you know, you know, is this heartburn? Is this, you know, it's nothing, like I don't want to go. There seems to be a lot of people who are more afraid of being wrong and going to the emergency room than of being right. That's right, and we, and we hear that a lot. I have had people apologize, I'm sorry that it, I, I came in. To, and it's, it's never a problem for us to take care of people if they're having symptoms that they're concerned about. And it can be very difficult even for us. With modern medical technology, we can spend hours, sometimes even keep people overnight to evaluate them, to look at their heart, to really determine what's going on. And you know, one thing I like to say is nobody ever comes to the emergency department for heartburn. Sometimes after hours of evaluation, we're left with maybe it is the heartburn causing the symptoms, but that wasn't what brought them in. They came in for chest pain they were concerned about, and we're happy to see anyone under those circumstances. And it's that concern that if, if you're concerned or if your spouse is concerned or if your coworkers are around you concerned, that should in itself should be a warning sign. Absolutely. If, if it's something that's out of the ordinary for you, if you've not experienced these symptoms, you're concerned, someone else is concerned, I don't want anyone to ever second guess themselves and sit at home wondering. I'd rather them you know, seek care and get that taken care of. I want, we did, uh, we put it out on Facebook yesterday and also on our website, clickondetroit.com. If you've suffered a heart attack, if you're a survivor, what were your symptoms? What did it feel like? Um, and we got a ton of responses. So this is just a sampling that I've printed out and it's pages upon pages. But I did want to read a couple of these, um, starting with Lauren's story. Um, it's, a, it's a touch long, but it's got a lot of good points in it, so stay with us. Uh, Lauren had a heart attack hours after her 66th birthday. She says, went to bed very late and started to feel cold, nauseous, then felt crushing chest pain, very hard to breathe, and finally pain going down the inside of each arm. Very scary feeling, but it was the middle of the night. With three dogs and living alone, I was afraid to call 911 and leave my dogs who would need to go out and eat by morning. So I waited until daylight. Per my doctor, I could have died by waiting. Had trouble walking and breathing due to the crushing pain in my chest, but I got my dogs out and fed and then called a friend for help. He took me to the nearest urgent care who told me to immediately drive to the hospital. They should have called 911. All right, she survived, but there's a lot of lessons in this. There are. Um, I, I think, first of all, she hit on what we were just talking about, that if you're having symptoms that are really concerning, clearly she, she was concerned about those symptoms, and I'm, I'm glad that she's doing well now, apparently, but um, 
definitely, that's, that's a cause to call 911, go to the hospital immediately um, when you're having those, those severe symptoms. And actually, we hear a lot about dogs. That's, uh, that's a, a very common reason why people say, I've got a dog at home, I, I wanted to wait to feed the dog, or I, I can't stay to have my heart evaluated because I've got a dog at home. And I always try to counter with people, like, the dog clearly, you know, you, you love your dog, the dog loves you. You've got to take care of you first so you can keep taking care of your dog. And, and you guys do allow people to make phone calls Absolutely. in the emergency room. I mean, you understand that there are things that might need to be taken care of when they get there. Okay. We, we've helped. I, I've personally made phone calls on occasion to try to get a hold of a relative, to somebody to go and look after kids, look after the dog, so that that patient can stay. And we have social workers and, and others that are fantastic at, at making those things happen. So please don't ever let the, yeah. those types of reasons be a reason you don't come to see us. Now, another thing that she hit on and is the urgent care issue. And mm -hmm. I've, I've interviewed a lot of people over the years who are survivors of many, many things. And mm -hmm. if I had a dollar for every heart attack person, patient who told me they went to urgent care first, I could take a really nice trip. Right. I, let me throw it out there. Is urgent care a good place to go if you think you're having a heart attack? So I would say if you believe you're having a heart attack, if you're having those severe crushing chest pains, things like uh, these, these people have described, em emergency departments are set up to handle anything and everything. Uh, urgent cares really are not trained and equipped to do the types of things that we're talking about here. So, so chest pain, severe shortness of breath, that should be something taken to, an, you should go to an emergency department. Um, urgent cares are fantastic for, uh, for other things, for, for more minor complaints, but not this case. And what happens if you are having a heart attack and you get to an urgent care? So typically, if you show up with an urgent, at an urgent care, m most of them will have the, uh, the ability to maybe get an EKG, get some aspirin, and call an emergency department, call 911, to get you transferred there for that higher level of care as quickly as possible. So you're going to the hospital anyways, you've just made a delay for yourself. Almost certainly you're going to the hospital um, just by way of the urgent care. Another issue with urgent care is if you're going to an urgent care, you're, you're either driving yourself or someone is driving you. What risk do you run in choosing that mode of transportation? Right. Well, certainly, if, if you call 911 and the paramedics show up, uh, you have uh, people that are that are trained and able to assess you and begin treatment for you immediately. And that's obviously not happening in your own vehicle, especially if you're driving. Um, and so if people are having symptoms they're concerned about, um, 911 is certainly the fastest way to begin treatment and get you to a safe place. Yeah. All right. Um, Let's look, we do have some comments coming in. All right, Robin wants to know, are the symptoms of a heart attack and anxiety in women similar? It's a good question, it's a fair question. Um, I, I like to tell my patients when they, when they ask me, could this be anxiety, is that this, this particular emergency department uh, doctor is never going to diagnose you with anxiety. That's, to us, that's a diagnosis of, of exclusion, meaning that we have ruled out all of the other bad things before we get to something as, um, as benign as anxiety. So yes, there's certainly some overlap. There's people sometimes feel anxious while they're having a heart attack, particularly women in some cases, as they may have atypical symptoms. Um, but. I would say if, if someone's having symptoms that they, they aren't comfortable with, they aren't certain about, uh, come in and never ascribe those symptoms to pure anxiety. Um, she did touch on the issue of women though, and I know women and people with diabetes tend to have less classic symptoms, so they don't have the elephant on the chest, they don't have the shooting pain down the arm. Do we know why? Well, it's, uh, I want to start by clarifying that sometimes they can have those, those symptoms. So it's important to note that women and uh, diabetics can still have those classic crushing chest pains or pain down the arm, but they do tend to experience uh, sometimes more silent or more atypical uh, problems. We're not really sure why that happens in women, although it's fairly well described. Uh, in diabetics, we think that it may have something to do with the way the nerves uh, process those pain signals. Many people with diabetes are familiar with neuropathy, where the, the legs become numb. Uh, and we think the same thing may happen with some of those nerves in the chest and, and affect the way that that pain is perceived. Uh, so we uh, doctors have to maintain a, uh, a much higher level of suspicion for diabetics and women about heart disease when we see them. Here's a question for you. All right, if I break my arm, my mm -hmm. arm hurts. Mm -hmm. If I'm having a heart attack, why doesn't my heart hurt? Why doesn't my chest hurt? Right. Well, it has to do with the way that we're wired uh, for nerves. If I, if I touch my right forearm, I know I'm touching my right forearm because of the way the signals are carried. For the, the visceral organs, those, the organs inside of us, um, the sensation is, is not that direct. Uh, so for, we don't have to 
typically know our liver hurts, for example. <laughs> but we, we may feel that pain somewhere else. And for the heart, often that's in the neck, sometimes the back or the shoulder blades, and often the arms, especially the inside of the left arm, that seems to be a common place for it. But it can radiate to other places too. But people don't always have a, a sensation right in their, in their heart, per se, because we just don't perceive it that way. One of the patients in our story last night, Keith, he had pain in his teeth. Mm -hmm. do, do you hear that sometimes? Uh, I've definitely had people who have had jaw or, or what they think may be tooth pain, um, again, probably because of that, that referred pain uh, where it's just not sensed directly. Certainly seen it in the face, in the neck, um, and, and people thinking they're having a toothache. Okay. All right, we have another story uh, that one of the survivors sent in. I want to read that one to you. This is from Carl. Carl uh, says, I work for the city of River Rouge and went to lunch. I was sitting in my car and the middle of my chest hurt for a few minutes and then it went away. Happened many times. My jaw and neck also hurt. I went to my office and looked up heart attack symptoms on the computer. Then I drove to Henry Ford Wyandotte Hospital and the rest is history. Mm -hmm. um, he had some of the classic symptoms, he did. but the chest pain was coming and going. Right. Typical? Atypical? It definitely can come and go. I mean, we, we look for patterns when we're, when we're evaluating people who are having chest pain. And one of the most concerning patterns can be that pain, that pressure that is coming and going with exertion. So if you can normally go up a flight of stairs without symptoms, and now suddenly you're having these, these symptoms uh, while just going up a few steps, that's concerning to us. And if it goes away when you rest, that also fits that pattern of concern. But it's important to note that some people may have those symptoms that wax and wane even without exertion. That can still be concerning. But he's describing a pretty concerning and classic case. Uh, Keith, from our story last night, he also said he would mow the yard and he would get short of breath and that didn't usually happen. Right. Uh, we had another woman that we interviewed for Heart Month and she, she said she was bringing laundry up from her basement, got to the top of the steps, felt short of breath. That didn't mm -hmm. usually happen. Uh, was also on vacation, same thing happened. Mm -hmm. is, is that something that you hear when you look back at people? I certainly do hear that uh, a fair amount when you really start investigating with people and asking them more questions about their history, that, that they'll notice a decreased exercise tolerance. So something that they were able to do before that maybe rather suddenly they're noticing they can't do it as easily anymore. And, and that can happen with deconditioning, you know, getting out of shape. Um, but when it happens more suddenly, especially if it's coming with chest pressure um, or nausea or being very sweaty, those are things that, that raise our level of suspicion and would make us much more concerned. Would you consider that, you know, the, the first opportunity to prevent a heart attack? I think that would be a, a great opportunity to really determine what's going on before it gets to a crisis level. If someone's having those symptoms, um, if they're having them actively, would encourage them to, to come to us. Uh, but if not, their primary care doctor may be able to speak to them about doing a, a stress test or some other type of evaluation to really see what is their risk of, of heart disease. And that's, that's where we get into the, the actual medical care that has to be individualized for each patient. Uh, but there are things that your doctor can do to what we call risk stratify you. So look at, look at your particular risk based on are you a smoker, what's your family history, your blood pressure, your cholesterol, and, and determine your age and determine who needs, who needs more testing, more evaluation for those symptoms. Because if you get to them early, if you address them early, you don't uh, come in they uh, don't to see, see you. Me. They yeah. don't come to see me, right. <laughs> You're not worried about putting yourself out of business by preventing all these heart attacks. Not at all. Emergency <laughs> doctors are actually quite happy to do things like this and put ourselves out of business a little bit, yeah. Um, you mentioned cholesterol and high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. I, you told me this when I was interviewing you the first time and it really stayed with me. How often are you asking someone who's having a heart attack in your emergency room, uh, what's your, what's your, uh, do you have high blood pressure? What's mm -hmm. your cholesterol? And what is their response? Uh, oftentimes they don't know. Um, and so we're seeing that in people who are having a heart attack or people that we're just trying to evaluate and see what's, uh, what their risks are. And you ask them, do you have high blood pressure? And they say, I don't know, I don't think so. Um, but the monitor is clearly showing us that they've got pretty high blood pressure at that point. Um, and cholesterol, it's it, not something we typically evaluate in the emergency department, but often they don't know. And those are two really important risk factors for, for your heart health that you know, during heart month would be a great time to, to talk to your doctor about having those things tested for if it's appropriate for you and, uh, and, and take action on those. Yeah, we, we did a story earlier this month on the number of people who could name their bank balance but had no clue what their cholesterol was. That's and, right. and you can guess which one there was more response right. to. <laughs> That's right. Important numbers. Um, Another symptom that really popped out as we're looking through people describing their heart attacks is people feeling like they had heartburn. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really tough one for people because people do get heartburn. Can you kind of break that down for us a little bit? Well, it's, 
It's difficult because, as I said earlier, no one comes to the ER thinking, I, I have heartburn, I want treatment for my heartburn. They come in saying, I'm having chest pain. And the symptoms of, of severe heartburn or, or esophageal spasm, where the, the muscle of the esophagus actually clenches and, and, and contracts because of that acid irritation, it can be similar to a heart attack, and it, it can be difficult for us to, to separate those out. Although still something you would want to know if you Absolutely. had it. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you would really want to understand what was going on with that particular patient. And so so I've, I've seen people who come in saying, I'm having, I think I'm having heartburn, uh, but have never had acid reflux before, and in some cases it does turn out to actually be a, a heart problem. So there's a, a great deal of overlap in the way that people um, people sense those things mm -hmm. and if you're having a new symptom I wouldn't automatically ascribe it to heartburn right. um, until you've had that evaluated. Yeah actually Greg from the story last night he told his wife he had heartburn and she said you don't get heartburn you know what right. but he to him he wasn't concerned about that because right. he was like well it must be heartburn. Right there's always I think a human tendency to try to minimize your symptoms as much as possible we, we see that a lot um, and so the, the, the message just has to be, if you're, having, if you're having new symptoms that are concerning, especially if they fit some of the patterns we've talked about here, you should get those evaluated. All right, let's take a look, see if we have any more. All right. Carla says, I had a heart attack at 34 years old. I wasn't overweight didn't have high blood pressure or high cholesterol and was in relatively good health. I was sweeping my son's bedroom carpet. I felt flush, numbness in both arms from my shoulders down to my arms. I knew I didn't feel like myself. Um, she talks about the, the pain down the arms. Mm -hmm. I saw other people who said, well, I had pain in the right arm, so I knew it couldn't be my heart. Right. Talk about the pain in the arms, because right. the one thing people know is if it's pain down your left arm, it's gotta be your heart. Right. But people think that excludes everything else. Right, and that's, I think, important to mention as we talked about that referred pain. I mean, the, the, the more typically seen pattern is, is to have pain down the left arm. I've seen pain in both arms. I've seen pain in the right arm only. I've seen pain just in the jaw. Um, the, body, you know, the body hasn't read the textbook. It doesn't know what it's supposed to do. Um, and it, it, it sort didn't of get the memo. It did not. So it, it tends to behave as it, as it wants. And so I think it, it's important here to really recognize she didn't feel like herself. I mean, she clearly understood this was something different, this was wrong. And it sounds like she had a, a good outcome from that in, in getting, getting care, I hope. Um, but that, that's important. She says, doctor diagnosed my heart attack attributed to heredity. It's been over 15 years since. Praise the Lord, I haven't had any other heart attacks. God that's, is good. That's great. Um, but 34 years old, decent shape, yeah, good shape. How do you, how often do you see something like that? Um, to see that in the 30s with that, with somebody who's in good shape, that is rare, but the family history here is really important. Um, it's definitely something that enters into our risk stratification, into our calculations, and it's hard to know exactly what her family history are, is, but that, that seems to be her, her, her primary risk. And I, I, have to, I have seen them, I've seen heart attacks with people in their 30s before. You just have to kind of keep digging. If it doesn't make sense, right. if, if the symptoms don't add up, you just need to keep looking. Donna makes an excellent point. If you are driving, you run the risk of killing innocent people on the road. Never drive yourself. That, that's right. I, I would second that. Call 911 is absolutely the fastest way. How similar is a dissection to a heart attack? So I, I want to separate that out into two different things because okay. we saw um, on some of the stories that you've run that there's a coronary artery dissection, which is where one of the arteries that feeds the heart dissects versus an aortic dissection, which is the big okay. vessel coming out of the heart. And that's, that's called SCAD, right? The, so, which, which one is SCAD? Because that's so, what Courtney from our story Right, so Courtney from, from your story had, had SCAD. That's the spontaneous coronary artery dissection. And so that's where one of those arteries, one of the three major arteries that feeds the heart muscle itself dissects, or in other words, the, the layers of that vessel sort of tear apart. And what that does is it blocks downstream flow uh, to the heart. Um, that's different from an aortic dissection, which is where the large vessel, the aorta coming out of the heart, does the same thing where that tears apart. Um, so in the case of SCAD, um, while that's a fairly rare thing to have happen, it can cause the same symptoms as a heart attack because it's blocking blood flow to the heart itself. Um, and so the symptoms that people have may be very, very similar. In some cases, they may come and go rather quickly because that flap, that that piece of that, in, the inside of that artery, can move back and forth, causing obstruction and opening back up. Okay. 
And so I've, I've, I've actually seen one patient like that who was having symptoms that were sort of coming and going as that flap moved. Uh, that's the kind of symptoms that you'd expect with that. But that's different from the aortic dissection. Right. The aortic dissection is going to be um, involving the, that, that great vessel coming out uh, that feeds really everything in the body. Um, and so people with that tend to have more of a sharp, uh, sometimes called a stabbing or tearing pain in their back between their shoulder blades, often see very high blood pressure with it. And people may have numbness in the arms or legs or, or symptoms that seem like a stroke. And so that's, if people were to have any of those symptoms, absolutely uh, need to call 911 and have that evaluated quickly. That, that's major emergency, need immediate treatment, like huge life-threatening risk, correct? Absolutely, yeah. Oh, yeah, why don't we go to that? Carmela Powers now checks her pulse and blood pressure every day, looking for subtle signs of heart problems. But for years, she unknowingly ignored them. Carmela would get pain in her jaw and had no idea it was a symptom of serious heart trouble. Down in here, this is where it would just erupt and it would come on real strong and then it would go away. Then Carmela suffered three heart attacks in a matter of days, but she was lucky. Studies find women are less likely than men to survive their first heart attack. When women are having heart attacks, their uh, recognition is often delayed. Could be a few hours, could be days. Dr. Lakshmi Mehta says heart attack symptoms in women can be more subtle. Some women experience really bad um, heartburn. Well, that's really hard to tell. Is it food or is it my heart? While both sexes can experience chest pain or discomfort, women more often report pain in their back, arm, neck, or jaw. Other potential symptoms, shortness of breath, nausea, lightheadedness, sweating, or unusual fatigue. They're symptoms Carmela wants women and men to remember. I really didn't hear much even then about jaw pain in w women. And mine was really severe. All right, she is definitely lucky to be alive. A lot of missed opportunities there. Um, one of her symptoms that came up, fatigue. Mm -hmm. um, how can fatigue, and, and how do you separate out normal fatigue? I mean, we're all tired sometimes it, from unusual fatigue. Right, that, that can be extremely challenging when the symptoms of fatigue are what is actually the presenting symptom of a heart problem like that. I, I think, again, you have to sort of look at the overall pattern. Is it coming in with exertion? Is there something else where you can build out to make it more of a heart um, of a heart concern and, and sometimes you just you just have to keep looking and that involves doing more advanced testing to look at the heart you just you just have to keep looking um, well we we talked about not driving yourself to the ER but talk about the idea of driving past many ERs too. Sure, I, I, I've seen a number of patients that have uh, loyalty to a particular hospital. Um, and Which you don't dissuade them from in general, no, but. <laughs> no, cer certainly happy that they have that faith um, in, in us, but uh, certainly this is something where it's very, very time sensitive, and I, I always try to tell people, you should go to the nearest emergency department, uh, call 911, have them assess you, take you to the nearest appropriate place, because driving or having even having a family member drive you further could put you or, or at, at greater risk. So uh, I, I asked you this and it didn't make it into the story for time, but I, I will ask you here, all right, if you thought you were having a heart attack, what would you do? If I, if I were at home or anywhere else and thought I was having a heart attack, I would call 911. I know that's the fastest way uh, to get medical attention. If I had aspirin on me, um, I, would, I would chew an adult dose aspirin. It's the fastest way to get the platelet, anti-platelet effects uh, into your body that can help uh, help save lives in a heart attack, so I would definitely chew an aspirin if I had one, but I'd be calling 911. And that's from an ER doctor, so take that. Um, I, w I do want to mention coming up tonight at 5, uh, Dr. McGeorge is going to be walking you through the steps of, okay, you think you or someone near you is having a heart attack, what do you do? Boom, 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 the timeline. Um, so I do hope you'll join us for that. Um, we have lots of information on the health page at clickondetroit.com about this, um, about what a heart attack feels like. I really encourage you to read through everyone's descriptions. I think that mm -hmm. is more educational than, than almost anything to see the real life. Uh, this is what happens. And right. they are very different symptoms and very Absolutely. different people. And, and that is something, what is your message you want to get out to people about what does a heart attack feel like? I, I think that everyone experiences it a little bit differently. Uh, there's definitely some, um, 
some common themes that you can pick that pick out of there. But I think the biggest thing to take home is that many of these people said they knew something wasn't right. They definitely felt something was off. And so if you are having symptoms you're concerned about, please call 911, go to the hospital and get that evaluated. Dr. Yuan, thank you so much for joining us. This has been wonderfully informative, and I hope everyone learned a lot. And uh, thank you for coming in. We appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Thanks, everyone.